Two weeks ago, during the DDW Congress, uh, have been presented the new ROM4 criteria for IBS, for uh, irritable bowel syndrome. And uh, we have the pleasure to meet uh, here in Bologna during IBS Bologna Days 2016, Professor Douglas Drosman, Emeritus Professor at the University of North Carolina, who is the president of the ROM Foundation. Professor Drosman, what is exactly ROM4 and how it has changed during the years? Rome 4 is really, as by the term, the fourth iteration of the Rome criteria in the Rome process, which began 25 years ago. And over every six to ten years, groups of experts get together and come up with recommendations and guidelines. And for Rome 4, the last one being ten years ago as Rome 3, we have more than just new criteria. We have a series of educational products. We have the Rome 4 book, which has been updated from Rome 3, and we have five more books. One is on uh, diagnostic algorithms. One is on what we call the multidimensional clinical profile. We have a primary care book, a pediatric book, and a book of questionnaires and validations. So it's a comprehensive educational program regarding IBS. With your, with your help, uh, I would like to know what's new in the ROM4. Let's start about the diagnosis. What has changed between ROM4 and ROM3? Well, some of the changes, particularly for IBS, is that we've tried to eliminate, if we can, the term functional. Because functional has meaning for patients and doctors that might be sometimes be stigmatized as being psychiatric or not real or uh, based on or, or there is another diagnosis. But the wrong criteria provide positive information so you can make the diagnosis. So we gave it a new definition. We said that functional disorders are disorders of gut-brain interaction, which bring into play the pathophysiology in terms of hypermotility, visceral hypersensitivity, disorders of gut-brain interaction, altered microbiota. Those are the kinds of factors that we think can play a role in understanding these conditions rather than just saying functional. Let's move to therapy. What has changed in terms of therapy? There are new drugs that has arrived on the market that could help the treatment of this disease. There are new drugs, but before we get into that, I think it's important to say that what we're doing about treatment is helping the clinician understand a better way to make their treatment decisions. Uh, a patient seen in primary care practice might have very mild symptoms who might respond to diet or lifestyle recommendations, but someone with very severe pain and uh, diarrhea might need different kinds of stronger medications. So what we do with the MDCP is we provide case-based learning where we incorporate the diagnosis, subcategories, like whether it's IBS-C or D or M, the quality of life and the impact, whether it's mild, moderate, or severe, any psychologic problems like anxiety and depression, and any physiologic disturbances, such as fecal incontinence or gastroparesis. By putting that all together, the clinician has a much more precise way to focus treatment and to lead to better treatment options. In this disease, as you have said uh, in, the, in, the, in your lecture, there is a still a high need of education around the world. What has changed in the ROM4 criteria regarding education? We are looking to accommodate the world. We know that there are differences across cultures. For example, the term bloating is very common in Asia as part of IBS, but there is no term for bloating in the Spanish language. So one of the changes in our education is to try to understand better what people from different cultures understand about irritable bowel and other functional GI diagnoses, and we make changes in our recommendations to accommodate that. Uh, another example would be in diagnosis, in the United States, someone coming in with dyspepsia may not be endoscoped. You treat them empirically with a proton pump inhibitor. But in Asia, because the point prevalence of cancer is so high, they get endoscoped first 
before they get treated. That's an example of a cultural difference. Uh, Professor Drosman, for people not familiar with the Rome program, where it is available, where we could uh, find it? We can get you can get information at our website, uh, which is www.romecriteria.org. This is information for uh, anyone to read about the materials. Uh, you can also purchase our books. Uh, you can go online uh, on the website and purchase the books. There are videos and other educational programs as well.